this is a recording of the Simple Bubble Small Basic Recipe for Teachers. So in this recipe, we are going to introduce some new concepts of events in particular. Um, also, this recipe has um, some complexity in terms of the objects that we're using. In particular, we have a hint in the first line that um, the kids are going to need to explore the program window and the ShapeMaker API. And the ShapeMaker is part of the extensions that um, Llewellyn and I wrote, so you'll have to have the extensions, of course, for this recipe. So in our intentional method of teaching, we're going to start by um, translating a line that the kids can actually see, and that is going to be line 29. So if you can read that out for me. Create the bubble. And in line 30, we're going to use the shape maker, and you can see up to the right here, we've got the shape maker um, sitting here, and we're going to say shape maker, and then we're going to say uh, create circle, because that's what we mean, we mean by bubble. And we're going to use a fake it till you make it technique here, and we're going to just say um, that we have a radius of um, 20, and then we're going to go ahead and run it, and nothing's going to happen because we haven't placed the shape on the program window. So um, we're not going to remove the line until we can actually see it, and then we're going to go to the next line, and um, if you could read line 31 for me. Move the center of the bubble to the current position of the mouse on the window window okay so for that what object are we going to use um, if we don't know we can do a control space and then we can look and um, you want to encourage the kids to look at shape maker or, or program window here so in shape maker you can see that we've got the method center shape at so um, one of the purposes of this recipe is to get the kids to understand reading the documentation so we're going to call the center shape at method and then again, we've got some more complexity in the methods here. You can see we've got three parameters that we're passing. So if the kids get stuck, don't tell them the answer. Have them read the documentation. Read out loud to each other the three arguments, shape and the X and Y. And then you can see we've got an example here, shape maker, center shape at. And then um, here we are creating the circle and, and centering it at specific coordinates. So we're going to say center shape at. Then we're going to pass in the first value. Now, this is a little bit tricky because we've created a bubble, but we haven't created it as a variable. So one of the things that we want to do is we want to go back and say circle, or actually what would probably be better is bubble, create a variable, and then we want to pass in the bubble variable. Now what we're going to do is we're going to fake it till we make it in terms of the mouse position, and we're just going to say where on the screen we're going to put that, and let's just say 100, 100. I'm not sure it's going to show up on the recording. But um, because there's so much complexity here, you want to have a multi-step translation process. And then you want to run it. And then there it does show up. So that's cool. So now we want to finish translating this line. So we want to translate the current position of the mouse on the window. And in order to do that, we want to get the mouse X and Y. And so we want to explore the mouse object. So you can give the kids the hint of exploring the mouse object. And then again, encourage them to read the documentation. And you can see over here we have a mouse X and a mouse Y property, and that's kind of what we're going for. So um, that's going to retrieve the mouse X and then the mouse Y. And what you can do is you can have them just run it after one, and then um, you might have to full screen this so that you can actually see what it looks like. That's the mouse X, and then close that out, and then go ahead and do the mouse Y. And we'll do the mouse Y. And then they'll understand what mouse X and mouse Y are actually doing. And again, you may have to full screen it to see it. And you can see that's the position that we um, had our mouse in. So now, move the center of the bubble to the current position of the mouse in the window. We've translated that line. And um, we've created the bubble. Now, one thing in the recipe, we probably need to update this. We mean to create the bubble with a specific radius. So create the bubble with a specific radius is really what this English means right here. So in order to do that, we're going to translate line 27. So can you read line 27? Set the, set the radius for, a cir for the circle to a random number between one and um, 10 and 50. So what we want to do is create a variable called radius here. And um, we can fake it till we make it. So we can start with 20, and then we can pass this in. This is a really good way to teach this so the kids can see how all these things are connected. And um, just to make it um, uh, more fun, after you do the radius of 20, and again, you may have to full screen it so they can actually see where the X and Y are. Then you can do a radius of 200 so that they can understand how the variable is working. And then they should be able to see it's a much bigger circle. So now what you want to do is you want to set this to this random number. So they may remember from previous recipes 
that this is on the math object. So if they can't remember it at all, encourage them to explore by doing a control space here, which looks like this. Um, and if they are really stuck, you can give them the hint of the math object. Now once they get the math object, you want them to read the documentation, and then they should see the get random number. Now what's tricky about this, and we did this on purpose, again, because we're trying to emphasize in this recipe complexity of arguments. Um, you can see that by default, we have a number between 1 and the end number. But if you read in here, we want a number between 10 and 50. And of course, the reason is so that we don't have a circle that you can't see with a, a radius of like 0. So this will take a little bit of time for kids to get to, but what you want to think about is you want to say, what if we had 40? What would it take to have um, 40 be the maximum value? So we'd start at what? What is the maximum value that we start at? Which is 1. So have them do the math. We want to start at 10 and then have a maximum value of up to 40. So that's what we're going for here. And that is a little bit of complexity, but um, the kids can usually understand it. And there's going to be your bubble. OK, so that's translated. So the next thing that we want to do is, because we're going to um, have this bubble be part of a subroutine, is we're going to create the sub. So we're going to say sub, create bubble. And this should be a very familiar pattern by now, where we're going to end this and end sub. And what you always want to do is have them run it before they call it so they can see that it does nothing. And then you want to have them remember that um, they need to call it. Now this is particularly important in this recipe, because we're going to just fake it till we make it. We're not going to set the create bubble to be called when the mouse is clicked. We're just going to set it to run when the program runs first. So we're going to go ahead and run it. And we're going to see that it was called. Okay. So the next thing that we want to do is we want to introduce the concept of events. And we have a slide about this. By the way, I'm going to clean up this line because we don't need it anymore. And I'm going to clean up this line. You really want to emphasize this because it makes the code more readable. And then you're going to do the format code here. And you can see we have two lines left to translate in this sub. So um, what we want to do here is we want to associate this when the mouse is clicked. Now the kids are probably going to go to the mouse object, and that's not where they want to go. You want to refer them back to the hint. So you want to refer them back to the hint, and we want to say um, program window. And we're just going to take this out for a minute. Program window. and then we want to look at program window, and we want to bring up this new object, which is mouse clicked, which is an event. Now, the syntax for small basic is when you call a method, you simply remove the parentheses. So kids will probably forget, and they'll probably get this error. Okay. So what you want to do is have them take the parentheses off. And what this is doing now is this is associating this method with a mouse, mouse click. So once you run it, you'll see, and again, you have to full screen this so you can see it. Where you click your mouse is where you get bubbles. Now, kids will be really having a great time at this point going, Woo, I love all my bubbles. But one of the things that you want to do is talk about, all right, in the method, we're not quite done translating. So we want to go back down to the method, and we want to say, um, remove the current bubble. Now, in order to do that, we need to think of program window or shape maker. You want to emphasize this over and over and over. Here, we're trying to get the kids understanding to look at the APIs, because if they just tried to do this without this API, they'd have a really, really hard time. But if they go to ShapeMaker, they can see under ShapeMaker, we've got this method, remove shape. So we're just going to call remove shape. And that takes one argument, the shape. And of course, the shape is the bubble. So um, we pass that in, and it becomes very, very simple. And then um, when we have this um, available, we click, and then it gets removed. So we have only a single bubble. Now, our pattern, as you've seen as I've gone through these recipes, is to create the shape and then add the color. And we do that because the creating the shape is usually the more difficult programmatically thing, and adding the color is the fun. So um, this is very simple in this recipe. We're going to have a color palette here, and we're just going to use the same um, uh, color palette. And we're going to use the color wheel, and we're going to add colors and just quickly add the colors here. So we'll add Alice Blue, for example, and I'm just going to copy and paste. Now, normally you'd have the kids run each line, but again, for the purposes of this video, I think you, as instructors, are going to understand how to do this. And I'm going to add some colors to the color wheel. When you do the variation for this recipe, it's going to be really important that you have the colors on the color wheel, too. So you're going to want to do this, even though it might seem a little extraneous when you're actually doing the recipe, if you intend to teach the variation in particular. So this is dark blue, and then we're going to add purple, 
and it's going to give us a nice range of this, this set of colors. Of course, at this point, we're going to create a sub here for prepare color palette. The kids are probably going to be changing colors. Encourage them to use um, colors that are in the same family. So this can um, satisfy your kids that are artistically inclined. And then we want to go ahead and call this prepare color palette. Now this is not going to do anything. And again, it's a great reinforcement in here for how subs actually work because you've made this great color cap palette. The kids are going to be all excited. They're maybe not going to be thinking. They're going to go, how come my bubble is still like a boring color? So we're trying to have a fun way to reinforce the use of methods. So we're going to get rid of all the extraneous lines because we want to enforce that discipline with the kids and so that they can actually visually see the line that still needs to be translated. And we're going to get rid of all this. And we'll see the very last line in the crepe bubble is change the color for the next circle to the next color on the color wheel. Now this is a pretty complex line. So what object are we going to use here? Shape maker. Shape maker again. Shape maker makes our life really, really easy because we have this convenient method set color for next shape. So hopefully by now you can see the pattern of this recipe, which is basically API exploration um, along with eventing. So um, once we have that, then it becomes very easy to say color wheel and then um, get next color and then we should be good to go and we should be having a nice variety. Let me make this big so you guys can see it of all of our different shapes. Um, so this is a really fun recipe, great way to introduce events, very popular with the kids. Um, have fun with it. We um, have um, in our lesson plan the uh, recap and then uh, we have a variation written for this which we'll record and I believe we have an exam as well. So enjoy and if you want more go to www.teachingkidsprogramming.org. Thank you.